So today I'm going to teach about the power of your thoughts. Praise God. There is a lot that is going on in man's life, especially the mind. Hallelujah. Everything begins in the mind of a man or, or of a person. Praise God. When I, when I talk of a man, the man in the Bible can be translated in two ways. Man refers to human being. That is the first one. And the second one, man refers to man as opposed to woman. Praise God. So don't say that maybe I'm not mentioning the women. I'm not addressing them. I'm addressing everyone, either a person or a man. Praise God. So, for you to be transformed, God first needs to touch your mind for you to become something else. Praise God. The book of Romans 12 verses 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Praise God. What does this mean? It means for you to know the will of God, first your mind has to be transformed. For your mind to be transformed or to say that your mind has been transformed, first it should not conform to the ways of the world. Praise God. The other day I was preaching about abundance, place of abundance. And I say that who has money will not, like will not have money enough. Praise God. If you are looking for something, for example, if you want to marry, you won't have like as many wives as you want. Here we see that a man has, has only one wife and a woman has only one husband. But it doesn't mean that is enough. Praise God. And they say the other time that if you, look, you are looking for something and God has not brought you to the place where you shall not want, but whatever you get and whatever you have shall be enough for you, then what, is, what does that mean? It means that the mind does something in your life. Praise God. The mind in this way can be used in such a way that you are hungry for everything at any time over and over your life. Praise God. So, if something has to happen in your life or it has to change, first we change your mind. Praise God. And that is why the word today or the scripture tells us that first you need to be transformed by first be renewed in our minds. Hallelujah. And it tells us that, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So if our minds are sober, as according to the uh, book of Peter, 1 Peter 1 verses 13, it tells us that with minds that are alert and sober, put hope in the grace of the Lord. Praise God. Therefore, guard the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace. That is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus. Praise God. Christ is revealed in your life the moment when you accept Jesus. When you accept Jesus as your savior, as your personal savior, what does that mean? It means you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, it means there is a problem. So as you continue, as you've been transformed your mind, and you continue your mind to be transformed and it remains in the state of being transformed, then it means your mind will be alert. Praise God. It will be sober so that whatever God or the Spirit shares in your heart, the insights that Jesus or the Holy Spirit shares in the Spirit, you'll be able to understand. Praise God. Without your mind being alert and being sober, you won't understand anything in the spirit. Any insights, you won't receive anything at all. Hallelujah. 
So being saved again, it doesn't mean just to worship and praise God. But it means a lot to the life of a person. From the transforming of the mind to the time when you fulfill the will of God in your life. To the time when you put hope for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that is about to be revealed. Hallelujah. There is a lot that is going on in the life of a person. When it comes to being said, there is a time they were asking about the king of God. They asked and Jesus told them, the kingdom of God is here now, praise God. But now, how do we see that the kingdom of God is here? Because there is something going on in the spirit. But most of the time, we do not understand what is going on. Hallelujah. Because we miss a few things in the spirit. We miss everything that the Holy Spirit is sharing with us. Why? Because our minds are full of things are fully of troubles of the world, hardships of the world. You are thinking about your family while at the same time the Holy Spirit is releasing something. Hallelujah. If you, you are meditating the word of God by that time, it means your mind is sober, praise God. It means your mind is alert. But if you are not meditating anything, your meditation is upon the, the worry of tomorrow, what you and my family eat tomorrow. But the Bible tells us to do not worry about tomorrow. Just as the birds, like they have no home, they have no place to go to. But still they have their food and they continue with life. Praise God. But in our minds we have put everything. You have a divorce problem. You have a problem at your family that is maybe at the village. You have a work problem. So everything that you put in the mind corrupts the mind. Praise God. So for you to be able to make sure that you receive and understand the will of God, first you have to be alert and sober. Praise God. So that when the grace of God is revealed in you, you shall be able to receive it and be able to understand that it's the grace of God working in me. Hallelujah. But if our minds are, are corrupt of everything that is of the world, that means we are not growing individually in the heart and also in the spirit. The Bible says, as man thinketh, so he is. So if you are thinking about acquiring wealth, money, so many wives, cars, like material things, you want to acquire the whole world. But what does that lead to at the end? Nowhere. Hallelujah. You came to this world. If you have thought, I don't know if you have thought about something about this world. But you found yourself in this world. Even the time you will live, you will just live, you will live everything on this world. How can you live a balanced life in such a way your mind won't be corrupted by the world so that you can know at this point I need to live for Christ. At this point I need to enjoy life. At this point I need to think about my family. At this point I need to think about the word of God. Praise God. The only person who is able to balance your life is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Because everyone, even Christ himself, was dependent on what he hears from the Father. Not his own works that he did, but he did the works of the, Lord, of the Father. Praise God. But all that came in the spirit and he was able to hear. And all that begins in the mind. Be sober and alert. Praise God. Let's go to the book of Genesis. So that we can understand what power of our thoughts are. As we continue thinking, these things that we think, the book of Genesis chapter 11, we will start from verses 1. So as we continue think, these things that we think, they are corrupting our minds. Like they are making us go far, far away from the word of God. It doesn't draw us near God. But if we can be transformed, even for a little while, so that we can test in meditation the word of God, 
you will see that there is something new. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. Let's proceed until verses 9. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shema and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had, sorry, I, I was still reading on that one. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. Verses 4. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which sons of men had built. Just go to the previous verse. And they said, Come us, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose, is, whose top is the heaven. Let us make a name for ourselves. You see? These men are looking for greatness. They are looking to make a name for themselves. Praise God. They have forgotten that it's the Lord who changes the seasons. Praise God. If you read the book of Daniel, you will see that God makes and changes the seasons. He makes the wise and also, he makes the kings. Praise God. Daniel 2, 21. Let's read there and then we'll come back to this one. Daniel chapter 2, verses 21. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Praise God. He gives knowledge to those who have understanding. So, what does this mean? For you to be able to have the knowledge of God, first you need to have an understanding. If you do not have an understanding of anything that you are reading or anything that you are receiving, if your mind is not okay, you will not understand anything. Because whatever you receive doesn't make sense in yourself. Praise God. But if you have that understanding, which is attached to your mind, God gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge. Hallelujah. So these men, the Babylonians didn't know that. Go back to where we're reading Genesis verses 4. They didn't know that God, he removes and raises the kings. They want to make themselves, they want to make themselves great so that they can be known over the whole earth. Praise God. That, what is that? Like they came together and they shared. They have a common goal in their lives. Like these minds all came together. Come, let us build our, ourselves a seat and a tower who's top in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. Are you the kind of a person? Whom you say that I want to have like a, this big company that can be known the whole world. I want to make a lot of money in the career that I am today. I want to make as many children as I want so that they can know me. So that as I go I leave so many children so that my name can be remembered on this earth. There are such people today that they want to leave a name because of the children and grandchildren they are leaving behind. Hallelujah. But all that is nothing. Praise God. Because it's the mind that does all that. It's the thoughts that you have that leads you nowhere. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's proceed to verse 5. But the Lord came down to see the seat and the tower which the sons of men had built. Let's proceed. 
And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we read from verses 4, these people, they had one language and they came together. They say to themselves, let us do this. They brought everything together that they wanted to build a city. But what happened? The God had everything. The God that you worship today can hear your thoughts. Everything you think about, the Lord hears. Wherever you go, you can't hide yourself. Wherever you are, it doesn't matter where you are. The same way you can, like, like you can pray by meditation, it's the same way the Lord is able to hear you. The same way you think of evil. The same way you think of the good. Hallelujah. This is what they begin to do. What does, they had not begun to do anything. They just came together. They shared what they had in their minds. Praise God. Now nothing they propose to do will be withheld from them. Hallelujah. Before you do anything, there is a time when Jesus was telling these guys that for you to sin, you don't have to commit the act. Praise God. If you see the wife of you think to do an act, what does that mean? Jesus was telling them that whatever you think of doing, that you have already seen. Praise God. Yes. So whatever you put in the mind, that one can cause you to sin or it can be treated as sin because you have already done it in your mind but you have only lacked the opportunity to fulfill it. So what does this mean? God is not moved by the steps that you make physically. God is moved by the thoughts of your mind. Are you doing something in the mind? Are you making movements in the mind? Praise God. Is your mind moved? Or is, is there anything that is leading you to act in the mind for the ways of the Lord? If your mind can lead you to, a, to the ways of the Lord without even making the steps, the Lord will make the steps for you. Praise God. Why? Because the power of our thoughts are so heavy that Lord can even interpret what we are thinking. And what God can interpret in the mind, can, God can put something in that that can cause the heaviness. If you are just thinking to pray and it doesn't stop, it means God is putting more energy and power to what you are thinking. So that you can fulfill it. So God pushes you in the mind so that you can do something. Hallelujah. So before they were able to begin the whole work, God came down and stopped them and scattered them. Praise God. They were not able to build anything at all. They were not. God had seen what they were thinking and the, the tower of Babylon was not built. Praise God. But we have seen what these guys, they were talking about. Let's go to the book of Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. The book of Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians. Let's start from verses 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we would not walk according to the flesh. Praise God. Let's go to the second verse. For the weapons of our warfare are not canal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Verses 5. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. There is something here that is being revealed on this scripture. That there are some arguments
arguments in our minds. There are some things that are raising. If we have been talking about something called pride, where does that come from? It starts in the mind. Praise God. So you lift yourself in the mind and you see everyone else as if he's there nothing. Praise God. So casting down arguments and every high thing. So if you have these thoughts that like are higher than anything in your life, The scripture tells us to cast it down. Praise God. Amen. That every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You have these thoughts that like are coming over and over. That like they corrupt you in the mind. But you do not know that those, the same thoughts are raising themselves higher. What does that mean if they are higher than the knowledge? It means your thoughts are controlling you. Hallelujah. Like you are not able to do anything of God. Because the knowledge of God is inferior in your mind. It has not been lifted up. For you to exalt God, to worship God, first you need to start in the mind. What does that it means that as I told you, God is not moved by the things you may, you do physically. Those are the accomplishment of the works of God. The steps, the wealth that you are getting, everything you are getting, those are the accomplishments of the word of God in your life, the promises of God. Nothing just begins as you see it. It begins from somewhere. It begins for you to be able to touch even this, the spiritual word first. You need to begin your mind, attach your mind to the spirit, to the spiritual world. The knowledge of God. God gives why, uh, knowledge and wisdom to those who have understanding. Praise God. Amen. If your mind doesn't have understanding of the word of God, if your mind doesn't know how to think and meditate about the word of God, then there is a problem. Praise God. Amen. We have a problem. Let's know how to read the word of God and not just to read but be able to meditate it over and over. Praise God. Amen. You don't need, need even to remember what, what the scripture or that verse is but are you able to remember that which you have read? What makes you to remember that which you have read it's first the understanding that you have in that which you have read and then after you have read and understood something, then God reveals with the knowledge of that scripture. Praise God. Amen. But if there is nothing at all, you are not putting effort. Your mind is not there at all, but you are reading. That means you are just reading a storybook just to get excitement about that story. Praise God. Amen. You want to, full, to get a fulfillment of something from something that is not meant to. This one was meant to give you peace. To give you joy with that understanding that comes with it. So that God can turn into knowledge that you need to live for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. Amen. There are things in this life that we have put like so high in our minds. Uh, that everything we do are dependent on that. Uh, because if you think of what my family will eat tomorrow, that means there is a problem. Because you have to think, what is God saying about my life tomorrow? Because God uh, comes to Aaron and he says that I am. What uh, will I tell the people who you are? And they say that. God says, I am. He is God of the present. He is God who takes care of you today. But your mind is tomorrow. God is today. So you are not intercepting at all. God is releasing your word for today. But your mind is in yesterday. Praise God. It's in the past. That means there is a problem. There is no place that you can intercept to get what is God, God is telling you. So we need to bring every thought into captivity. Everything that we think, can we get it into captivity? 
kuichukua mateka tuiweke chini ya miguu yetu praise god not to lift it up to the obedience of christ what does that tell us there is something there is something mm. there is something we call the obedience of christ there is a story and the scripture tells us how jesus christ came to this world how did it happen something like a conversation happened in the heavens and jesus christ said send me praise god Amen. and we say, when he said send me that means he had obeyed praise god that means his obedience has some kind of influence has some kind of power in it it's not just obedience because the scripture says that you put that captivity into the obedience of jesus christ if it doesn't have power this obedience it can't keep captive of the thoughts in your mind it can't there is something associated with this obedience that jesus had when he accepted to come to save us to this world there is something that he was released or attached to everything about jesus christ that he died and on the cross everything was fulfilled praise god you have been struggling a lot like you want to be faithful at the place of work this guy is some like a lot of guys are handling money a lot of money but when they see the money like something comes up praise god something raises in themselves hallelujah so that you still like start thinking about the money if i take some of this i might be rich no one will know about this if i see this young beautiful lady i walk with her my wife will not know. Yes, no one will know that. But remember, you have a personal relationship with God, not with your wife. So being faithful is not being faithful to your wife, not being faithful to the place of work, not being faithful to your boss, but being faithful to God. Praise God. It's not about you or the person you are next to. It's about you and your God. It's about you and Jesus. It's about you and the Holy Spirit connecting you to the throne of God. So, putting captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ, that means the obedience of Christ was enough. You didn't have to obey anything. You have to just be be at the place that Jesus Christ tells you to be. If you are the right place at the right time, you will not mess around, praise God. Most cause most of you, you are left behind because the glory of God is supposed to, to take you from one place to another, to another as you continue growing. But you, you are not like with the glory of God as takes you. You are left behind. You are like, like you accepted Jesus Christ like five years ago, but you are still a baby. You are still taking milk. But the Lord is telling you, come near me. Draw close to me so that I can take you to the next glory. But what you are doing, you are just focusing on the world. Your mind is full of the world things, material things, that you are not moving forward in your life. How are you supposed to establish a personal relationship? With the person who is like wants to reward your mind, the desires of your heart. Because the reward of a transformed mind is for you to be removed, like to go from one glory to another. And each and every glory has its own benefit in it. But if we are not connected, like we are not attached to the branch, where Jesus tells, tells us that remain attached to the branch, because you need to be, remain attached to that vein for the branch to bear fruit. If you are not reattached to the vein, then that means you will not be able to bear fruit. For you to be able to bear fruit, you need your mind to be transformed and to think about the things of God because tell us, put your mind on the things above, not the things on earth. So that as you continue, you shall know and the grace of God shall be revealed upon your life. Praise God. Amen. There is nothing for us that God can even reveal the grace that he has for us. 
Because he sees the mind is corrupt. Every thought comes, you do it. Every praise God. No, Christians, we are not like that. For those who have been saved and we know Christ is our personal savior, we need to think and know that Christ died for us. It's not in vain. But if we know that we are sick today, it tells us that Christ will heal us. Because he says that joy comes in the morning. Praise God. But there is a problem. The obedience of Christ is nothing in your life. Why? Because you are not putting every thought into that captive. Praise God. Every thought like Christ as itself, you are with it. Wherever it sends you, you just do it. You have you forgotten that. Jesus says, Father gave them to me like the sheep. It's not like you are not like, like you are not saving yourself for you to born, be born again. It's not about you. It's God who withdraws you close to Jesus for you to be able to accept Jesus Christ. It's not you to say that today I'm accepting Jesus Christ. Yes, you are accepting, but God draws you to Jesus, and He says to those. The Father has given me, they shall not depart from me. Praise God. And he continues saying that those who knows me or my sheep knows my voice, they shall follow it. So wherever Jesus goes, you follow the voice. This is the shepherd, you follow the shepherd. Jesus Christ just tells you, come. Come, my son. Come, my daughter. You follow the voice. And Jesus continued to say that these people, they shall continue to do exploits. Praise God. Amen. But it starts with the mind. If there is nothing of God in your mind, there is nothing you can receive because you have not put anything your mind sober to or alert to receive the grace. And in this world, you need grace for you to be able to get everything you need in this world. Because you might be working on the way. You see that someone greets you and he gives you a thousand note. You go ahead, someone gives you like a 200 shillings and you continue like you are hungry today. Someone gives you food because you have that grace of receiving. Because without it, you can't move forward. For you to be able to understand the grace as the book of First Peter 1 that says you need to put your mind sober and to be alert. For you to put hope in the grace that is to be revealed in your life. Praise God. Without putting your mind to be alert and sober, there is no hope that you can put in Jesus. There is nothing you can receive from Jesus. But the grace when it reveals it misses you because you are not there where you are supposed to be. But if you continue to believe in God and to put in hope, the hope that you need to be sober, to be sober means not to be corrupted, to be alert means not to be conformed by the things of this world, so that when he releases the insights that this is where you will go get your food today, this is where you are going to get your employment today, this is where you are going to get your wife today, you need to understand those things, so that the grace of marriage, the grace of employment, the grace to receive everything you need you have to be there Amen. if you are not there you will miss it and it begins in the mind the mind is so powerful in such a way that whatever you think that is not of the God, God cannot reward it. Whatever that you think that is not attached to the ways of God, you are missing a few things. You are missing a lot of things. You are missing everything in your life. You are missing the will of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's put everything captive. Because if we practice this, to understand the same thing is the mind of Christ. The same mind was in Christ. The same mind Christ had and he had like the understanding of God. He had everything about God. He knew everything about the Father. And when he knew... 
because he was able to receive the insight because his mind was sober and alert. He was able to be withdrawn to the wilderness to fast for 40 days so that it can unlock everything he needed on this world so that he could understand and have the knowledge that he needed. Praise God. Because he was born of blood and water and he came as human so he needed to learn everything. If you are born of blood and water, you can know everything. Everything is revealed to you glory to glory. Jesus was able to move from one glory to another. If Jesus didn't move to, from glory to glory, Jesus could not have saved us. Praise God. I don't know if you understand that point. Jesus was born like just any man. The same way you are born, he was born to be the savior, but he had also a choice. It's written in the world that you can choose between life and evil, between life and death, between the good and the evil. So Christ came as a man. He was born of blood and water. So he had the choice to conform to the things of this world, but he didn't conform. There is no difference between you and Jesus. For that time when Jesus was born, the difference is that Jesus accepted to be sober and alert to the things of God. As he continued to walk on this world, the word of God kept being revealed in himself and he continued to understand the things of the spirit and he communicated to us those things. That is when he came to understood his assignment that he was sent to die on this world. The same way you fear death, Jesus Christ was able to fear death. The same way you are not like you, you want to follow the word of God. It's the same way Jesus Christ had the word of God and followed him. Praise God. Amen. There is something in you that if you're attentive enough, you'll be able to hear everything that God is telling you about. But that is only if your mind is sober. If your mind is not sober, my friend, you'll not get it. If your mind is not alert, you'll not get that insight. Everything released in the spirit about you, you miss it. But Jesus was able to understand it. That is when he knew that he had an assignment. Because he grew as a young child, he was just like a mason with his father. He did everything. He didn't understand everything. But with time as time goes, there was something in him that he was able to understand getting the insight. That is when he understood his assignment. Praise God. Jesus was not like an exception. Like he was like a spirit. No. He was just like a normal human being. But he was able to understand through receiving everything he needed to receive. Praise God. All that begins in the mind. So whatever comes into your mind, you think about it, just have it. How, how, how about the knowledge of God that you have in your life? From the time you are born again, from the time you got like, to understand the word of God, has it been transformed into a knowledge that you are able to be able to, to, to judge your thoughts against the knowledge of God that you have in your heart? Because at that point, when you are thinking about those things, I am not there. He is not there. It's only you and Jesus and the knowledge that you have at that particular time. And also, it's not every time that you are connected to the spirit, but you are connected most of the time with the knowledge and also with the grace of God. So you have those things, the understanding, the wisdom, you shall be able to know what you need to do at what particular time. Praise God. So being faithful is not like something you need to struggle with. Being obedient is not something that you need to struggle with. Jesus Christ was obedient enough so that if we follow and we put everything into that obedience, you will see yourself following along and being obedient automatically. If you, you want to be faithful to everybody, you don't need to struggle to be faithful to Pastor Charles, to be faithful to Reverend, to be faithful to Mark and everyone. No, you don't have to do that. Just be faithful to God. You will see yourself aligning. You are being faithful to everyone. Stop struggling with your life. Just focus on God. Put your focus on God. You will see yourself in line because God tells us that. Just obey this. Yes, there are ten commandments. But what am I telling you? Just know love. Love one another. Love your neighbor. And God, Jesus continued telling us that. He has put the word 
he has, he, he has put the word and written it in our hearts. So wherever you go, you have the word of God. Wherever you go, you don't have to struggle with, oh, this commandment tells me not to kill. What you carry in your heart, it already automatically fulfills that. It won't tell you to kill. It won't tell you to, 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 to kill or to, to steal anything. It will you just align yourself. Because Jesus knows that even if we didn't tell us to love one another, even if we didn't tell us to do anything, but he has put that which we need in our hearts, that alone is enough. That which he has put in our hearts is enough to lead you the way that you are supposed to be. I struggle with this life. You are struggling with this life. Thank you so much. You are struggling with this life because you want to treat everything like separate. You treat like the world a separate thing, yourself a separate thing, God a separate thing, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, Father. But Jesus tells, says that the Father and I are one. He says that they are one and these people wanted to stone him. But they didn't understand that he continues to tell that having it written in the scripture that you are God and continues to tell that he was sent from the Father. Praise God. So, if you treat the Holy Spirit as in you and you and the Spirit are one and you follow what the Spirit tells you, then you will fulfill everything that you need to fulfill on this earth. Praise God. So, obey Jesus Christ. Put this scripture into your mind all the days of your life. Praise God. Be blessed. Welcome, brother.